Welcome to Read Your Comics. Today I'm looking at Incredible Hulk number 357. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Daryl. I'm the host of Read Your Comics. I'm going to be diving back into the Peter David run of Hulk. I've covered every issue so far up to this point. I've kind of taken a little break from it for a minute, but I want to get back into it because we are still in the midst of the Joe Fixit era. I'm going to try to get that portion of, of Hulk lore wrapped up by the end of this year so let's dive into this one with a pretty cool uh jeff purvis cover here inked by bob mcleod i think bob mcleod's giving a nice like smoother texture to some of purvis's more angular like ed edge style that we've seen up to this point um mcleod hasn't done a lot of inking on on the purvis run so far um, in fact, he doesn't even do the interior of this issue, but I think it, I think it looks pretty good on this cover. I like the layout of this. I've got a, a pretty good looking gray Hulk here. He's taking on some kind of monster of some sort. It looks like they're maybe it, it's a demonic looking. It looks like maybe they're kind of in like a underworld type of thing that hasn't been exactly where the story's gone so far. So let's see. But before I open it up, I just want to give a quick shout out to all the viewer support. All your likes, comments, and shares are appreciated. And if you're enjoying this positive comic content, please be sure to subscribe. It helps the algorithm know that you want this kind of content and other comic fans will hopefully get it fed to them too. It helps build the comics community and just generally spread the word of the love of comics. So let's jump in. In the previous issues, uh, the Hulk took on this character, Glorian, who is a servant of the Shaper of Worlds. Now, he thinks that this is the Shaper of Worlds, testing him with the idea to save the Hulk from his own evil self, so to speak. And, like I said, Glorian thinks this guy is uh, the Shaper of Worlds, testing him. And he's really with this group called the magi or the, the Mag magi i don't know how you say it. it's m-a-g-g-i-a -A. anyway which is a group that's been slowly building up throughout this las vegas story of another group coming in to set up their uh organized crime organization i, I don't love that aspect of the story it, it sounds like it would make sense because of gambling and all that blah 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 but you know las vegas is, is a legitimate business city so anyway <laughs> um glorian saying like um the hulk doesn't fall for my illusions that i can create my little fantasies i need a, a true physical threat something to uh, essentially get his attention and this guy who goes by the name clute says yeah no problem got you covered and he goes into his a little underground chamber here which you'll notice is, there's a pentagram for and now you're starting to get it it's like red suit pentagram in the previous issue, he had Glory and sign a contract in blood, really heavily hinting to this guy being the devil, right? I want to point out the Jeff Purvis lettering once again right here. Love how he does it. I like the two-tone thing of possibilities, the bam, as he's knocking down this wall. And you get the dialogue from Banner right here saying, Last time I saw you, you were building this wall, which was a couple issues ago. Um, I think the issue started off with the Hulk kind of trying to wall off Banner from his own psyche. But awesome opening page here um you know peter david writing jeff purvis penciling and jim saunders the third is on inks uh jim saunders did a lot of the mcfarland run i think he does a pretty good job on this issue i do like the way this particular page is inked the the thing that kind of i think purvis does like a real thin line a lot of times and details particularly on faces and edges get lost a lot and i think uh Sanders does a good job on this one, kind of thickening up some of those lines. So the Hulk and Banner are going to have a little uh, powwow like they sometimes do inside their subconscious. This is the time of day when the Hulk is receding and Banner is coming out. It's, it's the end of the night going into the day. The Hulk is tired of Banner. That's why he tore down the wall to confront him. Basically, like, I'm going to kill you this time. You notice Banner's being a little cocky. There's like a sports car that he's leaning against here. And he's kind of like, go ahead, Hulk. Do it. See what happens. You'll be a mindless beast again, and uh, I don't think you want that. And at this point in the Hulk lore, they haven't really established that the Gray Hulk and the Green Hulk are actually two separate personalities. The way the Gray Hulk views it is that he is the Green Hulk, except he's able to like exert more control over his mental functions, and he doesn't want to go back to being the dumb Green Hulk. 
he doesn't like that aspect of himself. So, you know, Banner basically threatening the, like reverse threatening the Hulk. Like, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm tired of this too. Go ahead and kill me. See what happens to you. Which the Hulk kind of falls back on. And in a way, he's creating a deal of like, you've got something going here, Hulk. If you want to keep it going, you need to, you need to help me too. So he asks for money and the Hulk's like, there's money in, in the safe in my room. It's unlocked. Nobody would dare steal from, from me. And, um, and then he tells him to stay away from Marlo and <laughs> like, she's mine. And then Banner's even like, uh Oh, I should have quit while I was ahead. Bam. So he does get punched, but it's kind of like the bam, 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 knock on the door as he's waking back up as Bruce fully dressed, not in ripped. Well, I guess he's in somewhat. No, no, they're just oversized, I guess, oversized clothes and it's Marlo. And she's like, I want to see you and Joe together. So in the last issue, it kind of dawned on her that she doesn't see Joe during the day. She doesn't see Bruce at night. And she wants to see the two of them together. And he's like, oh, we can't do that right now. And she's like, that's fine then. Uh, just I don't want to see you or Joe at all ever again. Which he's kind of like, good. Get out of it. Like, she's innocent in all this. And he wants her kind of out of it. He likes her. Uh, you know, he's married. He's married to Betty still. And as far as he knows, Betty's still out there. But he, he felt bad for her being kind of like caught up in this. So he's kind of like, okay, that's a problem taken care of. So then he goes out and decides he's going to make the most of this time in Las Vegas, which I think is a neat aspect of what they were building up in this whole time. It's like, how are, how are Bruce and the Hulk <laughs> going to coexist with the Hulk's life as this uh, Las Vegas bouncer? Now, it's still going to be a problem because the Hulk isn't around during the day. So if there's trouble in the day, Joe Fix it's not going to be around. <laughs> Banner goes off to uh, get some breakfast and start trying to figure out what he's going to do here in Las Vegas. Meanwhile, we see Mr. Clute again heading down into this like cave-looking underworld. We'll notice there's some like gargoyle looking things. We're heavily implying, even more so than before, that he is that he's the devil, right? And he goes and he finds the soul that was a an assassin, like a mob assassin, that he's pulling out of like looks like a tar pit. It's, I mean, it's a, it's black and gross, and tells him like, "You're free to go. All you got to do is go up those stairs." And of course, the guy's like, "What? What's the catch?" He's being suffered, you know, suffering in hell. He's he's in he's in purgatory. And the guy's like, what's the catch? No catch. You just head on up. But there's a gray demon that's going to try to stop you from getting out. So you got to get past him. But if you get past him, you're free to go. Now we're going to see Glorian uh, go see Mr. Baron Getty, the Hulk's employer. And he's telling him, like, Joe Fix, it's bad for you. He's like, oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which Baron Getty's already been kind of feeling a little iffy about Joe. Um, but then Glorian uses his, his illusion powers to have the Hulk come in and terrorize him for a second, which, you know, scares him. And then he realizes like, what in the world? Like, this is like a dream. Like he, <laughs> Joe didn't bust in here. And again, we have like some pretty cool pages of Purvis. I, I do think the inking here is, is making more of his line work pop that, uh, some of the, even the more recent issues that I've been more critical of have failed to do bruce goes to a men's apparel store he wants a suit and like the monologue of this guy here is kind of like um he doesn't look like somebody that can afford their clothes so this is our discount rack and they're all purple pants with ex extra stretchy it's kind of funny this probably came out around the same time as that wolverine uh seven and eight story where wolverine got all those purple pants for the hulk to wear and i, I guess this is Peter David's chance to make a similar joke. And I remember that as a kid, because obviously I, I knew the Hulk is the green purple pants wearing monster, but I didn't really start reading the Hulk until he was gray. And I remember seeing this joke and kind of laughing about like, ha ha, they're poking fun at the like cliche of the Hulk. I mean, now I love a green Hulk and purple pants, but at the time it's like they were trying to get away from that, you know, the, the silliness or the cartooniness of, of that. Uh, visual um but anyway but you know bruce flashes some money and he comes out wearing a a nice suit meanwhile as the demon as the demon the 
the the lost soul is climbing the stairs and you got you got some pretty cool stuff here i think purvis had more fun drawing stuff like this like he really enjoyed those jarella's world issues i think he really enjoyed these um hell issues or limbo purgatory whatever you want to call this so the hulk shows up but again this is more or less an illusion and my kid read this actually recently too he i got him a a, tra a visionaries a peter david visionaries trade paperback that included these issues and he liked these issues but he's like it was really weird because the hulk and banner were in two places at once like he didn't quite grasp that this isn't really the hulk you know and i, I told him i was like that was really kind of like the devil messing with him so the hulk shows up and just starts like <laughs> mutilating this guy more or less he crushes his hands and make them like all these long grotesque looking fingers with claws uh, you got a, a spinner out here. <laughs> Detour here. Every generation of kids has this kind of toy that is like more or less tops that you throw into like a ring that just collide into each other and bang, and then one of them is the winner. I think that's funny. Like today's version is Beyblades, but I remember these things. I never had any, but I do remember them. Um, you get a Marlow interlude here where uh, Glorian shows up again and she's like, aren't you the guy that looked dead but the, got up and walked away? And he's saying the same thing. Get, you know, get rid of Joe, which he had already kind of decided she was going to do. And he does the same allusion to her too. So I can see where my kid was kind of confused by this, that all of a sudden, um, you know, the Hulk is showing up like all over the place and just terrorizing everybody. He has the, he has the Hulk, you know, almost assaulting her until she like realizes it was an illusion as well look at banner what's it, the the fake mustache <laughs> he's got there so banner's showing up at the yucca flax radiation banner's showing up at the yucca flax radiation testing center so he's going to get a job somewhere near some nuclear stuff that he can start working on some experiments because that's what banner does right and she wants him to do night shifts and he's like uh can't do night shifts sorry back to this guy he's looking a little worse for the wear i love the, these pages uh, again you can tell purvis enjoyed doing these pages more than like this stuff the, like he gets bored with this stuff and but then when he gets a chance to do this where the hulk is molding this guy like he's made out of like clay and he pulls these like gross looking fleshy wings off his back Uh, it's night time, so now the Hulk or Banner's going to change into the Hulk. Pretty good transformation scene there. The only thing I kind of laughed at is this, is Banner just went and bought this expensive new suit. He knew the time was going to change, so why didn't he either put on Joe's clothes or just naked or whatever, you know, to, to do the transform, because now he's going to have to go buy some new pants again. And the Hulk wakes up, and he's like, I want to talk to Mike. I don't know if he's planning on telling Mike like what's going on with him here that he's really the Hulk and all this stuff. He's just like, I want to talk to you because he calls him. He's like, there's something you should know. And he's like, no, don't, don't. I was just going out and he exits. So now the Hulk even like, what, what's going on here? <laughs> the Hulk's like, what's going on here? This is weird stuff is happening, right? Um, one more time we go back to this guy who's almost out. There's the end. And he starts pulling him back down and, Every time the Hulk does something to him, it like distorts him into into this monster and pulls his face. That's a great shot of the Hulk right there too. That's some of the best panels are the close ups, like like this one and this one. And this is the Hulk this time. So now he goes to see Marlo, and she's frightened to death of him. So Mike's frightened of her. He's frightened of her, or she's frightened of him, and he is just like, what is going on around here? So he's, you know, he breaks in the door, and she stands her ground. This is my place. Now, now get out. I love the cauliflower ear this that he does, too. Like, McFarland did that, and Purvis continued it on. You only see it a little bit right there, but it works really well. Um, it's like then the story's moving so fast and then you've got the, the fire pit thing that we saw Clute go down in earlier and all of a sudden this character that the illusion Hulk has been distorting comes crawling out and I mean look at this page this is a pretty awesome page this would have been a good Halloween post <laughs> where is he
as this, uh, you know, he's like a, a ghoul, a demon or something crawling up out of the fire pit. And it says next Inferno two and Hulk zero. And we'll see in the next issue. I think it's interesting. This must have been around the same time that the Inferno X-Men story was going on. Even though this isn't a direct Inferno tie in, I think they're alluding to like, this is, this is the Hulk's version of Inferno. Cause you know, Inferno, while this main story contained to the X-Men books, it did, it dribbled into like Spider-Man and, uh, you know, a handful of other titles, usually with those characters in New York, just fighting some limbo monsters and stuff. Look at Nth Man making his debut. They're, they're promoting it right there. I, I've, I've been reading it and I like it. I'm going to do some videos on it soon. Classic ad. I think I mentioned that in a previous video as well. This Schwinn ad really stands out in my memory too. Like almost all the Marvel books had this Schwinn ad in this, uh, you know, couple of months around this issue coming out. So that's it for Hulk 357. As we continue through the Peter David run, the next issue is uh, a fun one as well. And um, we're getting close to the end of the Joe fix it time. And we're, you know, it's, it's all going to come down to you know, this guy's going to play a bigger role at the end of that than you would think until next time, read your comics. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my breakdown of this issue, you can support the channel by hitting subscribe. It costs you nothing and helps other comic fans find the channel. You can also visit readyourcomics.com for cool merch like this. Read Your Comics isn't just a brand, it's a mantra. And when you wear a Read Your Comics shirt, you are helping spread the word. For more classic comics conversation, be sure to follow me on Instagram at read.your.comics. And if you're still here, why not watch one of my older videos? Here or here.